Hi, my name is Megan Grove. I'm a genetic counselor at Stanford University Medical Center. And today I'm going to be talking to you about variant nomenclature, um, how to look up genomic coordinates for a particular variant of interest that you may be researching, uh, as well as how to obtain information on alternative and legacy names for your variant. So just to begin, uh, most of us are going to be functioning uh, off of a genetic testing report that's identified a variant in one of our patients, whether that be from the exome genome testing panel, single gene test. Uh, and while the content may vary in terms of level of detail, overall clinical testing labs describe variants using uh, standardized nomenclature, uh, which is that of HDVS or the Human Genome Variation Society guidelines. So I want to start this by just pointing you to the HDVS website which contains the up-to-date information on recommendations for how to describe sequence variants. So if you are looking at a genetic test report and uh, are seeking additional information as to how a variant is described, you can look at their up-to-date uh, kind of guidelines on this website. So there's some helpful information there. And basically, these recommend that when a variant is reported, it be reported in context of a particular gene transcript um, and that certain minimum sets of information should be included. So we're going to go through an example and what those different pieces of information look like, uh, just so when you are looking at a genetic testing report, that information is uh, more familiar. Okay. So let's say we ran a cardiomyopathy panel, and this variant was identified. So this is a very common way that genetic testing laboratories uh, may choose to report a variant. Um, and I will say, before we kind of delve into the details of what each of these pieces of information mean, um, a recent guideline published by the American College of Medical Genetics and Genomics uh, basically calls for the field to stop using terms like mutation and polymorphism and to instead use more neutral terms uh, such as variant. Um, or alteration, um, and, and that is mainly because uh, while a mutation uh, describes a permanent change in the sequence and a polymorphism is defined as a variant that's seen in the general population at more than 1% allele frequency, those terms have been kind of used frequently to refer to uh, mutation being pathogenic and polymorphism being benign, and that can lead to confusion um, and incorrect kind of assumptions of pathogenicity. So in their recent guidelines on variant classification that were published this spring, the ACMG recommended uh, using the term variant with modifiers uh, in accordance with their kind of five-tier classification. So pathogenic variant, likely pathogenic variant, variant of uncertain significance, likely benign variant, and benign variant. Um, and then also just a reminder, when we're saying variant, we're referring to something that's different, different from the human reference sequence. Um, and so when we don't see a variant, it means the DNA sequence matches the human reference. And uh, when I refer to human reference sequence, I'm just referring to the version of the genome reference that's being used uh, by the different laboratories. So right now, the laboratories are using uh, the human reference build HG19, so that's just referring to the, the version of the genome reference that we're using. Um, there is another genome reference, uh, uh, GRCH38, that's out there, and so it's you know, it's possible clinical laboratories will adopt that in the near future. So important to be aware of uh, which genome build your laboratory is using, and that's typically specified in the methodology section of the genetic testing report. Okay, so if we were to delve a little bit more into what do each of these pieces mean, uh, I've tried to draw your attention to each of these, uh, each of these subsets. So obviously right here, this, we're referring to the gene name first. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, every variant is reported in context of a particular gene transcript. So here we have the RefSeq transcript uh, where this particular variant is described. Um, and so this RefSeq is, uh, is, a, is a body that basically defines the different transcripts for genes. There are other types of um, uh, bodies, but most clinical testing laboratories do use the RefSeq nomenclature. And so here, each number, so this number right here, NM000257, 
refers to one gene, so 00257 refers to MY7, um, and then the 0.2 or 0.3 uh, refers to the version. So the transcript includes information about the protein sequence for the gene that defines things like the uh, intron and exon boundaries. Uh, so importantly, the coordinates of these genes can change over time as the reference is updated. Um, often the protein coding region itself, this 000257, doesn't change that much, but as we learn new information, the versions will uh, be updated. Um, additionally, uh, there can be different transcripts describing the same gene. So you can have uh, genes with multiple transcripts, you can have genes with only one transcript. Um, and some transcripts may be tissue specific. So again, it's important to know which transcript is being used to describe your variant of interest. Um, and when you are searching the literature, uh, because some of these standards for variant nomenclature have only been recently adopted widely by clinical laboratories, some variants might have different names in publications and different databases. Um, so for instance, the amino acid position might not be numbered in the same way that it's recommended now, um, according to the START codon. So things to keep in mind when you are uh, reviewing the literature and searching for which transcript uh, was used by authors or a particular database. So right here we have the uh, C dot nomenclature, we call it, or uh, that refers to the cDNA coding location. Um, so all proteins start with the START codon ATG, and the A position is the first coding nucleotide. So in this instance, uh, this is meaning at position 1,988, where you normally see a G, that's changed to an A in this patient. Uh, and that's 1,988 nucleotides from the starting A position of the start code on ATG. Um, we also have what we refer, refer to as P dot nomenclature, so the protein nomenclature. So the protein sequence uh, at residues or codon 663, where we normally see an arginine, this G to A substitution uh, leads this arginine to be turned into a histidine in this patient. So this is your P dot or protein nomenclature. And then not depicted here, uh, another way of describing a variant is the G dot nomenclature or the genome uh, genomic position. So we're gonna go through uh, how you would obtain that if it's not provided to you on a genetic testing report. And a reason you might want to look at that uh, genomic position is to look at a variant in the UCSC genome browser, uh, or to perhaps look at a variant in another way in some of the population data sets, for instance. Okay, so to obtain genomic coordinates, there are multiple different ways to do that. One tool I really like and is commonly used is called Mutalizer, um, so I've included the link right here. Uh, and another way of obtaining genomic coordinates, I'm not going to go through, but uh, Matt Thomas has gone through uh, in another, another video on the NCBI Variation Reporter. So if you haven't checked that out already, I'd encourage you to take a look at that to find another way to obtain genomic coordinates and other information. So uh, I'm gonna take us to uh, Mutalizer. I'm just gonna copy the link here. And make sure, uh, if you go to the Mutalizer homepage, you'll see many different options. Make sure you're clicking on the position converter page. And we're gonna go back uh, and see what type of input they want. So I'll draw your attention to this bottom section where they show examples of how you input information to obtain a genomic coordinate. Uh, one thing to double check is make sure you are using the same genome build or genome version that your laboratory used. So given this laboratory is using HD19, uh, we're, we're all good here. So as you saw, one of the input requirements is the RefSeq transcript and then the C dot nomenclature. So we're going to take this RefSeq transcript uh, describing this transcript of MYH7, paste it here, um, and then copy paste your C dot nomenclature. Then you're gonna hit convert variant description and that will give you your G dot nomenclature or your genomic position. So one thing to note is here when it's showing genomic position, you're seeing it, uh, it say you are going from C to T, and you'll probably notice that when you were looking at your C dot nomenclature, it's, taking, yeah, it's saying you're going from G to A. So that will sometimes happen where the transcript sequence is the reverse of the genomic reference sequence, and that's just because genes can code in both directions, or uh, another way of saying that, um, you have forward and reverse strands. So when that's the case, um, 
your transcript sequence or your C dot nomenclature may look a little bit different uh, when looking at the actual variant from the, uh, from the genomic reference sequence. So uh, for obtaining my complete genomic position, I have the actual position here, but it's helpful to also determine what chromosome your gene is on, um, because ways uh, people indicate genomic position is they would write G dot chromosome uh, and then this number. So um, we're looking at the MY7 gene. There are many ways to obtain quickly the information on which chromosome that's on. Uh, one way I like to do it is to go to NCI, the NCBI gene website. Um, just type in your gene, and then that will bring up which chromosome your gene is on. So you're going to see a long list. Make sure that you are looking at the human version of this gene, but as you can see here, um, MY7 is on chromosome 14. So to obtain the genomic position of this, I just went to mutilizer. So I would write G dot uh, for, for indicating the genomic position. I would write G dot chromosome um, 14. And then I would uh, take this position and put it, uh, and this is how I would de uh, depict my genomic position or G-dot nomenclature. So this is a help, this is an input, uh, the chromosome 14, and then the position that uh, you can place into UCSC Genome Browser if you're wanting to look up a variant there. You can also search various databases on this actual position. So how, how do we obtain legacy and alternative transcript names? So as I mentioned, genes can have multiple transcripts, and it's important for the purposes of making sure we're capturing all reports of our variant that we are searching on all different ways it can be described in the literature and in databases. Um, so there are many different ways to get at that question. We're not going to go through all of them, but these include things like taking that genomic position we just identified, putting it into UCSC. Um, DBSNP, uh, NCBI Variation Reporter, Mutilizer can give you different uh, transcript versions of your variant. Um, databases like ClinVar, which I'm going to take you through shortly, uh, and then locus-specific databases and the literature can be a helpful resource for obtaining um, historical names describing your variant um, and, and taking into account kind of uh, current and older ways of describing the gene and, the, and your variant of interest. And then some laboratories will include this type of information in their testing report. Uh, so some labs might say, when describing a variant has been reported in X number of cases, this variant is also uh, you know, named this in the literature. So that can be helpful because they've done that work uh, for you. So we're going to use a different example uh, when we are searching for an alternative transcript name. So I'm going to choose this sign one missense variant. And I don't, as you'll see, have the genomic position here. So I'm going to do uh, what we just learned and uh, quickly find the genomic position. So I need the RefSeq transcript. And then I need the C dot nomenclature. I'm going to paste those in, convert variant description. And there we have got uh, our genomic position. And again, I don't know off the top of my head um, which chromosome sign one is on, so I'm going to go quickly into NCBI gene. People might have different tools they like to use for that, um, but that way I can see sign one is on chromosome six. So my G dot nomenclature is chromosome six, uh, and then this um, position in mutilizer. So one way that I could obtain information as to whether there are alternative transcripts is I can take uh, this and I can put it into UCSC Genome Browser. So just make sure you don't actually include the G dot there. You just, uh, the input would be chromosome six and then the number. Uh, make sure you don't actually have the variant uh, pasted at the end. And you're gonna hit go. And then that uh, zooms you in at that particular nucleotide, so I like to zoom out. Um, you can zoom out however far you want, but it's helpful to be able to see the surrounding context, including the actual codon that you're in. So as I'm going to draw your attention to this section um, that I've highlighted here in green. Um, so as I showed you, the particular variant of ours uh, is histidine 8170 glutamine. 
And as you can see, these are the two rest peak transcripts for this sign one gene. So histidine H170, there's our variant, but on this other line, representing another transcript of the sign one gene, you see your histidine um, is actually described differently. So the same variant on a different transcript corresponds to histidine 8241. So it would be important when searching the literature to look um, at both of uh, these versions in case authors using a different transcript are describing your variant as well. So another way to get at this information, the same question would be through ClinVar. Um, so I already have the variant pulled up. If you have not yet watched the ClinVar how-to video, I'll point you to Colleen's video on ClinVar, uh, which includes great detail as to how to search for variants within this uh, very helpful database. Um, but if you were to pull this up, you can see our sign one variant, the histidine 8170 uh, glutamine. And then if you look in this HGVS section, oops, this HGVS section, um, and then you expand it, you can see the different transcripts uh, that are, uh, that, that are uh, included for the sign one gene. And obviously you can see the cDNA numbering is slightly different. And correspondingly, you have uh, the protein sequence is different. So we see, just like we saw in UCSD, based on the two different transcripts, your protein nomenclature is different. So uh, your variants can be represented in one of two ways, depending on which transcript you're looking at, either 8170 or 8241. So when I'm searching the literature and databases, I want to make sure I'm checking for both of those. Okay, so those are a couple of different ways that you can get at the question of is my variant described differently on alternative transcripts? Uh, the literature, locus-specific databases can be very helpful ways at getting at um, historical ways a variant was termed or numbered. Um, so those are all important considerations for when searching the literature. Uh, and then there are also detailed videos describing how you uh, can use certain tips and tricks for searching uh, of different databases and the internet for your case reports through a particular variant. 